on a bright blue September morning, I was sent on a suicide mission. That day started out totally ordinary and every day, just like everyone else. I was sitting in a meeting when the first tower was hit, but we didn't see the footage. So it wasn't until the second tower was hit that we realized our nation was under attack. I'm a young lieutenant, a rookie fighter pilot in my squadron in Washington, D.C. on the morning of 9-11. But we weren't an air defense alert squadron. We didn't have live weapons or missiles loaded on our jets. And we wouldn't get real missiles in time. We had to get airborne to protect. I was so eager and patient, but frustrated and angry because we couldn't get authorization to launch. Waiting. Just waiting. It wasn't until the Pentagon was hit. Mark Sasseville looks at me. Lucky, you're with me. Raisin, you and I go wait until you get missiles. Lucky, let's go. I run after Sass down the hallway to where our flight gear is. We're on a one-way mission. If we're successful, we won't be coming back. I'm zipping up my G-suit when Sass looks at me and says, I'll take out the cockpit. I would ram the tail. Scrambling our unarmed fighter jets out of Andrews Air Force Base, my flight lead, Mark Sasseville, and I took off and flew low over the Pennsylvania countryside, desperately searching for a hijacked airliner that we never found. We were a mission failure. The passengers on Flight 93 are the true heroes. I'm a fighter pilot. I've flown the F-16 in combat, been shot at, dropped bombs, and was in the Air Force for over 20 years. And in the time since that clear blue morning, I've come to realize that heroism isn't something unique or possessed by only a chosen few. The passengers on Flight 93 proved that to me. And the totally ordinary, everyday people who helped each other in the moments before the towers fell. The first responders who rushed into the buildings in smoke and debris. Not out. Random strangers coming to each other's aid in the streets. So many heroes. So many of their stories we'll never know. What's inspiring about their actions isn't just the incredible magnitude of their heroism. It's in the totally ordinary, everydayness of the heroes. Think about Flight 93. They made the decision to sacrifice their lives, attacking the hijackers, fighting their way into the cockpit to seize control of the airliner and crash it into the Pennsylvania countryside before it could reach our nation's capital. But when they boarded Flight 93 that morning, they were just going on a business trip, coming home from vacation, going to see Grandma. They we're just like you and me. We all have that totally ordinary, everyday hero inside of us. So why wait for a national crisis to bring that hero out? Don't we need everyday heroes every day? I've come to think of heroism as being comprised of three primary qualities, bravery, service, and belonging. And these aren't nouns, they're verbs. They are things that we can choose to do every day. And through a daily practice of bravery, service, and belonging, we can connect with and strengthen our inner hero. 
Bravery isn't the absence of fear. It's acting in the face of fear. Doing the right thing, even though it might terrify us. And sometimes our greatest fears are internal. Insecurity, self-doubt, the fear that we'll fail to measure up. But we must be brave. We must overcome our fears to do our duty. And that duty is service. Service may seem like the most accessible of these qualities to practice, but we need to think about service differently. What do I mean by service? It is acting with the recognition that there are things in this world more important than ourselves or our self-interests. Service is aligning our actions with that higher purpose. What's amazing about these two qualities, bravery and service, is that when they come together, when our service demands our bravery, they transform into courage. Now, courage, though, is like a muscle. If we don't practice bravery and service on a daily basis, the courage demanded may be too daunting, too heavy to lift. I've often thought of the passengers on Flight 93, the fear of the hijackers, the fear of dying, the fear of leaving forever their loved ones. You may remember Todd Beamer. He was a software account manager, a devoted father who taught Sunday school with his wife, an avid sports fan, and a passenger on Flight 93. As they were getting ready to charge the terrorists, Todd's last words of the group were, let's roll. They chose to overcome their fears in order to serve and protect our nation. They did it for us. They weren't just courageous. They were heroic. You see, heroism isn't just big courage. Heroism is about belonging. This is the essential piece of heroism, belonging. And we do that by choosing connection, finding common ground. It creates trust, shared purpose, community. On 9-11 and the days that followed, we came together as a nation. It didn't matter what race or tax bracket or sexuality or political party you were. What mattered was that we were all Americans. But today, we live in a world that's bombarded by angry, sensationalist media, partisan, hate-filled rhetoric, not shared connection, but shared antipathy. We're a nation divided, pitted against each other. How can any hero come from that? When I raised my right hand and took my oath of service, I didn't swear to protect and defend only those that looked like me, acted like me, voted like me, lived like me. No. I and every other service member are bound by oath to protect and defend our nation and our Constitution. And that means everyone. And I believe the passengers on Flight 93 felt the same way. We choose belonging, not in spite of our differences, but through them. Suspend our judgments, our antagonism, our suspicions. Seek the common. Find the humanity. Value our connection 
more than our own egos or fears or agendas. This is how we create belonging. And there's something magical about belonging, too. When we belong, our bravery and our service become easier. Like band of brothers, heroism isn't about us. So if belonging makes our heroism easier, what might it do for others? If we built inclusive communities, created belonging, could we set the conditions for others to find their inner hero? Imagine a world where we all are brave, we all serve, we all belong. A world where we all are heroes. Because we live in a world that needs more heroes. So don't wait for your moment, you must be ready. And the truth is, we can't wait. We need you now. So let's roll.